Welcome, coaches. We're back in the book of Philippians. We're going through the book, The Christ Pursuing Coach. And we're in chapter 10. We're going to talk about fight. And often when we hear that word fight, we tend to think of something that's a little bit out of bounds, you know, like a stuff in a, in a bar or something that took place. You heard that numerous times. One of your players got in a fight downtown in the bar after the game or whatever. It's violence or verbal war or something like that. But the kind of fight we're talking about here today is, is, is more of a fighting that comes from our thought process. It's the thinking. We have to fight for the right thoughts. We have to fight for the right entreaties. We have to ponder situations and to be able to look them over and exercise proper discernment. And that's a battle. And the Bible tells us, and particularly in Philippians 4.8, that we should think or dwell or ponder on these things. And it gives us a list of those things. So coach, you got a fight on your hands because the world's going to tell you, you did something wrong. You made a stupid mistake. You said that wrong thing to that kid. And you know what? You must know that if you will repent, if you confess that to the Lord, change direction on that one, and go and give apology where necessary, the Lord Jesus Christ will forgive you. He'll wash your sin clean. But the world's going to tell you, you screwed it up, you messed up. And a lot of times, because we're not thinking right, we just say, well, you know what, I'm the coach, and he's the player, and what I say goes, and tough cookies. But deep down inside, you're struggling. we got to get past those worldly thoughts. Keep your mind centered on the Scripture, coach. Remember the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. He died for every single sin. Not just your past sins, coach. Not just the ones that you did today. But even the ones in the future. And if you will stay with the Lord Jesus Christ, just like the Apostle Peter, after he blew it, three times he fumbled the ball. And that rooster crowed. And he looked at Jesus. And all he could see was his mistake. And he ran and he wept bitterly. But Jesus chased him. He found him. He restored him. He never lost his salvation. He just restored fellowship. And, and through that process, Peter became a giant in the faith. That's what God wants to do with you.